All right, sweet. So I think that we are live. Um, if you guys can see and hear me, I'm not watching a live feed of the stream because my internet at my house is a little sketchy and I don't want to push two streams at once. Uh, but if you guys can see and hear me, let me know in the comments section or in the live chat that you can see and hear me because I want to make sure it's working. Um, quick disclaimer, I am streaming from home. Obviously, we're all kind of working from home in the coming days. Um, so I definitely want you guys to understand that my internet might get a little choppy here and there. Um, but we're going to do our best. Hopefully it'll sound pretty good. Hopefully we'll get enough of those frames pushed through um, that things will stay good connection. I've got a wired connection, so we should be pretty good. Um, but if you guys could let me know, I'm going to go pop over here to analytics. Um, good. We are let know that I, you guys can hear me. So thanks for letting me know. Um, so you guys, this is a Q&A. Um, I want to take any questions you guys have. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Forrest. Um, I'm the director of Rocky Mountain School of Photography. My wife and I direct it together. Um, I'm also the main person you guys see on YouTube, so that's cool. I'm not the only person who works at the school. We have a team of awesome instructors and employees and just great people all around. Um, but I'm the main, Jeff and I are the main ones on the YouTube channel, so that's where you've probably seen me. But today I want to take any questions that you guys have. So if you have questions on photography, you have questions on um, basics of photography, on astrophotography, on adventure photography, night photography, kind of all the things that you guys have seen me make videos on, Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, um, whatever it is, let me know and I'm happy to answer it. I know a lot of people are kind of sitting cooped up in their house right now and it'll be a nice time to uh, get some questions answered. So um, definitely keep asking those in the comments. I see a lot of you guys commenting, so that's super awesome. Thank you for doing that. Um, and yeah, we'll just go from there. We'll see how the questions are probably last, you know, 15, 20 minutes, however long questions you guys have, we will answer them. So go ahead and start asking if you guys have them. Um, I'll give it a minute. If there's nothing coming down the line, I have some things I want to talk a little bit about, some backup, uh, backup items, so to speak, to, to mention. Um, but we should be pretty set, uh, all things considered. Um, just getting texts from people letting me know that it's working. So that's really, really good. Um, let me go ahead and refresh this real quick just to make sure I'm getting the latest information from you guys. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's make sure that loads. And sure enough, it does, which is awesome. Um, so uh, I'm going to start talking about some other stuff while questions come in. So feel free to ask those in the chat. A um, couple quick things. Uh, the first thing that I want to mention is a lot of you guys are not over on the RMSP community, and I really want to push you to do that. So we put a lot of effort last year into building a, a community forum on our website. Um, and if you go to rmsp.com and you click on uh, forums at the top, there's a button for it. It'll take you over to community.rmsp.com. And that is a community that we are putting a lot of effort into answering questions um, that you guys have. It's basically a forum site. It's open forum. Anyone can ask anything. And we really look forward to hearing you guys and kind of getting you guys engaged in that community. So you'll learn from a lot of instructors, a lot of staff people, things like that. Um, cool. we got some questions. So let's see. Uh, can pick car pictures fast moving? What's the best thing to freeze motion? Okay, that's a great question. So if you are photographing cars or runners or some sort of sports, the best thing to do is going to be to use a fast shutter speed. So uh, in photography, we have three basic controls. We have shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And the shutter speed is how, how long of a duration the shutter is open for. And you're gonna to wanna to use a shutter speed like one one thousandth of a second or one two thousandth of a second to freeze motion. Um, you're gonna to have to make up for that with aperture or with ISO by either increasing your ISO or opening up your aperture because one one thousandth or one two thousandth is not a lot of light. So we need to counter that by increasing the amount of light with the other controls. We actually have a video on photo basics coming out pretty soon. I know I've promised it to you guys before, but it takes a lot of effort to build a video like that. So that'll be coming down the line pretty quickly. Um, let's see another question here. If you were going to invest in a new camera mid range price, what would I look for? Um, so if I was going to look for a new camera, uh, I would really look at, I, I look at a few main things when I'm picking a camera. Uh, I would say there's really three criteria that matter to me. Criteria number one is price, obviously. Criteria number two is size and weight. And criteria number three is image quality. And unfortunately, at this point, it's hard to get a camera that's cheap, has really good image quality, and is super small. It just doesn't exist. You can usually get two of those three items. So I look at what's most important. Um, I would throw autofocus performance in there as well, probably as a fourth criteria, but it kind of comes down to what's the most important thing for you. The thing I would recommend is reach out. Um, I'd love to know a little bit more uh, about what you're into shooting wise. Um, 
But basically putting all those considerations together, I think mirrorless is definitely the future. So investing in a mirrorless system makes a lot of sense. Um, Canon's new mirrorless, not new, but their mirrorless EOS R or EOS RP are great options, um, as well as there's tons from Fuji, tons from Sony. There's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, let's see, for astrophotography, do you have any tips for Milky Way composition in relation to the foreground? Ryan, that's a great question. Um, what I would do is download the app called Photo Pills. Photo Pills is a way to visualize uh, the way that the Milky Way will land against a landscape. There's a tool in there called, uh, I think it's called Night AR or Augmented Reality. And you can actually point your phone around and see where the Milky Way will show up in your images. And that's what I would do 100% to plan that out. As for composition, usually getting low helps because that makes everything up front. Oh, I, I seem to be having some buffering issues. Let's make sure it's all good. All right, cool. Um, that's a, uh, sorry, broke my train of thought. Getting low will help your foreground seem a little bit larger, which will help everything look a little bit better in your frame. Other than that, not getting anything in front of the core of the Milky Way, having your accessories be more off to the side, as well as adding light painting into the scene. Um, if you go to RMSP's website and you go to our blog, we have, it's called Photo Tips. If you go to our website, it's on the menu bar. I actually just came out with a blog article about shooting the Milky Way, and it's got some tips in there. Uh, let's see, JC, other than maybe the top of the Blue Mountain, what are some good locations near Missoula for astrophotography? JC, that's a great question. Um, I really like for astro to get out of the light pollution. Um, and I like to, if you're trying to shoot the Milky Way, then getting like, you know, 10 or 15 miles outside of town can be really smart. Preferably, I really like north of Missoula, so up toward Nine Pipe um, and like the Ronan area. Um, that's a really nice area. Polson, kind of around there. Um, basically, by the Mission Mountains can be a fantastic place to shoot Astro. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Light years to you. I know who that is. Hey, hey. Um, let's see. Allison Shaw. Allison Shaw, is that actually you? Hi. Um, any mirrorless cameras that match or surpass the resolution of, for example, the Nikon D850? Interested in making super sharp big prints. Allison, wait for the Canon EOS R5. It's gonna be 60 megapixels and it's probably gonna be out later this year. It's gonna be awesome. Highly recommend that. Also, hi, I haven't said hi, I haven't seen you in forever. That's awesome, I hope that's really you. Um, let's see, Brandon, when will the winners of the contest be revealed? Brandon, the winners of the contest were revealed literally half a month ago. So go on Instagram, go on our website, they're all posted. Um, you would have been notified if you were a winner, the prizes have been shipped out. So I'm sorry to say, that you are not a winner, but that's okay. Uh, you might've made top 100, so go check that out for sure. Uh, let's see, Parker, short course classes, best way to learn, then what do you have to come, what do, do you have to have to come to them? Parker, that's a great question. So our short courses, um, for those of you who don't know, we do short courses, which are one or two day classes around the country. Obviously, given the current situation of the country, um, we aren't doing them right now. We're not planning new ones until the whole, you know, mystery, illness goes away, not mystery illness, but the whole illness goes away. By the way, I hope you guys are staying super safe and healthy out there. Um, great way to learn. You don't need anything except for, in some cases, a camera and a lens and a way to play with what we're talking about. But most of the, a lot of those classes, you can come with just a notebook. Um, in general, though, having a camera is nice because you can follow along with what the instructor is talking about. All of them, though, are listed on the website as far as what you need to bring. Let's see. What else we got here? Do you have any tips for inspiration coming up with concepts that haven't been done before, mostly regarding portrait photography? You know, that's a great idea. And I think um, you guys, a lot of things, a lot of people get in a rut where they think that everything in photography has been done before. As an example, think about like the smoke bomb craze that came out. The first person who used a smoke bomb in a photo, everyone was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing, right? Like. When these new crazes come out, I think it's uh, people have the tendency to shoot that craze a bunch and then get bored with it. And the thing you got to realize is I think a lot of those crazes or a lot of those things that people do are mostly just people having fun with their friends, mostly just people like shooting and thinking conceptually and thinking of cool, wacky ideas. And I think that's almost one of the best ways to do it is just to go have fun, go shoot and bring your camera as a fun tool to what you're already doing. And I think concepts will start to come out. Whether you have what you need to shoot that concept right then might not be true. Like you might have to come back another day to do it. Um, but regardless, I think that that's the best way to do it is literally just go have fun with friends, which is pretty awesome that it can be that simple. So hopefully that helps. 
Um, let's see, Scott, long story, but I'm a film photographer, do not use Photoshop very often, actually still using CS3, but now cannot upgrade Mac OS without losing CS3 suggestions. Uh, Scott, it's probably time to pay the 10 bucks a month and upgrade to the Adobe Photography Plan. That'll give you Lightroom and Photoshop with all the updates for 10 bucks a month, which is 120 a year, which is way cheaper than it used to be. Um, you'll also have updates with all the newest cameras as well as all the newest operating systems. So I just I would just bite the bullet and pay for it. Uh, Bob, hi Bob Buckhart, I remember you. Um, any new techniques for image resizing enlarging in Photoshop? You know, Bob, there's honestly not that much effort put behind image resizing in Photoshop anymore because our megapixels of our cameras have gotten so high. Um, there used to be, you know, all of the like uh, genuine fractals, like step one through 10 and you slowly scaled up. Honestly, these days, most digital cameras shoot a high enough resolution image that you don't need to scale up that much. If you do, the standard image resize inside of Photoshop works great. Um, one person I would ask would actually be Marcy James. I don't know if you remember Marcy when you came to school, uh, but Marcy runs a print business here in Missoula called Paper and Ink, and she does uh, prints for people, photographers all over the country. She would be a really good one to A, get prints from, uh, but also to ask that question. I, I don't know what she uses, but it's probably the best knowing Marcy. So I would look at that. Um, keep the questions coming. Allison, it is you. Good. It's good to see you too. That's awesome. Uh, Jared, hi. Hope to be at Summer Intensive. Since you'll be doing sharpening at the end of Lightroom Workflow, do you decrease the default sharpening to zero or leave it at 40? That's a great question. Um, so you guys, uh, Lightroom is applying sharpening to all of your images, whether you know it or not. Um, and I'm just going to switch over here real quick so I can monitor this. So Lightroom is applying all of sharpening to everything. Um, even if you don't know it. And what that means is basically every photo you take is getting a little hair of sharpening and I would leave that amount. Honestly, I would say um, most of the time that 40 amount of sharpening is gonna be a good amount for most things. It's really only when you start to print really large or you kinda took a blurry picture or you have a lower end lens that you need to increase it a little bit. Very rarely would I decrease it to zero. Um, with that said, I actually have a video on sharpening. You should check it out. It's on our YouTube channel. Just search for sharpening and I'll talk all about it. So funny thing is I've made videos on a lot of this stuff. Um, let's see, Allison, variable neutral density filter, basically just two polarizing filters. Uh, Allison, yes, at its core it is. Um, the difference is that those two polarizers are perfectly uh, matched with one another to not induce color casts and weird stuff. Um, they're awesome. Very, like I think with the advent of video, a lot of emphasis and effort has been put into making nice variable ND filters. Um, and I highly recommend, I actually, one second. Um, sorry about that. Uh, this is the one that I recommend. This is the uh, Polar Pro version, which uh, Peter McKinnon actually teamed up with Polar Pro to build this. But yeah, this is essentially two polarizers stacked together that produce a variable ND. This is from two stops all the way up to five stops, which works really, really nicely. So um, also, I know the stream's starting to cut in and out. I apologize. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying my best, people. Uh, slow internet at home. So, uh, but yes, variable NDs are awesome. Highly recommended. Um, let's see. JC, bought the Z7 instead of the Z6, hoping that Z6 is better for astrophotography because of low light capability. However, I can't downsample my high, can't I downsample? Yes. Um, JC, you totally can down downsample. It's always possible to reduce sizes of images in post way better than it is to increase sizes. The thing you're missing out on is the higher pixel density of your camera versus the Z6 will produce less or higher amounts of noise. It'll have less good low light capabilities. So the bigger pixels of the Z6, think about it, pixels, just a light bucket. Think of it as a big bucket that sucks up photons that, that come into your camera. The bigger your light bucket is, the uh, darker you're gonna be able to shoot in with the same ISO, which is kind of nice. Took the Lightroom class for you in 2014 using Lightroom 5, photo store, and external hard drive. Nervous about upgrading to Adobe Photo Plan. Schedule a private lesson. Photos, gee whiz, you can. Um, go on RMSP's website, go to, and actually all of you should know this, we are offering remote private instruction um, where we'll sit, one of our instructors will sit down with you, I'm on the list as well, uh, for an hour of private instruction. So the way to do that is go on our website 
And if you go to courses and then private instruction, you can schedule it right there, pay your money right there. I think, it, I think we're charging $75 an hour for that with any of us. So get me for 75 an hour. You can meet with my dad. You can meet with really anyone, um, any of our instructors, and you can schedule that time. I will sit down with you and I will help you with that remotely, not actually sit down. We can share screens and it, it's really easy. So yes, totally. Um, let's see, Brian E. I have the old offline version of Lightroom on my desktop computer, tons of photos there, have the cloud-based Lightroom on my laptop, was the easiest way of merging them. Um, if you're talking having Lightroom not classic on your laptop and Lightroom classic on your desktop, there's no way to really easily merge those. So instead you're gonna wanna use Lightroom classic on both machines. And if you do that, you should be able to have your catalog and your photos on both drive, on your main hard drive, like one hard drive, catalog and photos on there. And as long as both computers have Lightroom Classic, you'll be able to share between both of them, which is super sweet. Uh, let's see, JC, other than RMSP, obviously, yes, uh, of course, what are your, some of your other favorite YouTube photography channels? So JC, um, I would group the YouTube photography world into two main groups. You've got the entertainers and you've got the educators. Um, and the entertainers, there's tons of great ones out there. Um, Peter McKinnon, Maddie Hapuya, like there's, there's a ton. There's like so many good photo entertainers out there. I think if you're looking for real true education, honestly sticking with the companies that make the products that you're buying, they oftentimes do a really good job. Canon's YouTube channel, for example, has some great educational content on um, getting started in photography. So I would definitely check that out. Um, as well as Air Photography, he's one of my favorites that's out there. Um, there's a couple good Lightroom YouTubers. There's a lot of people out there. So it kind of depends. Uh, I personally love Peter McKinnon. I watch a lot of his stuff. Um, but the he has more turned into the entertainment side of things than the actual like deep tutorial side. Whether he changes that going forward, who knows? But those are some of my personal favorites. Um, you guys feel free to keep answering, a asking questions. Uh, we'll keep this stream going as long as the questions are flowing. These have been great so far. I really appreciate it. Um, I will say, like I was kind of going on a little thing there when you guys started asking. Um, you guys should all join our MSP community. It's free community on our website. You can ask questions. You can uh, post, question, post questions. You can answer questions. It's just a forum site. We're trying to put a lot of emphasis into that. Also, follow us on Instagram, especially during this time of social distancing. We're giving you guys a lot of good inspirational tips through Instagram, as well as critiquing your images. If you guys want your images critiqued on Instagram, um, all you gotta do is post photos with the hashtag RMSP photo critique in them. And every single week we're critiquing new images on Instagram. So definitely check that out. Um, JC, follow up. Okay, I can't just increase noise reduction Z6 and sacrifice some reduction, less noise to get the Z6 started. Um, JC, you don't have to justify the Z7. It's an amazing camera. Uh, I'm just, the only thing is because the pixels are smaller, you're never gonna be able to get the same low light performance as the Z6 it's just not possible. It's the way that the, the physics of the sensor work. Are you gonna be able to get 95% of the way there? Yes, and is your Z7 better in a lot of other ways? Yes, so own it. You should love that thing, it's awesome. All right, let's see, a couple others. Hi, new to photography, have no idea how to start. What camera would you recommend to a complete beginner? I strongly recommend a used camera to a beginner, a used DSLR, something like a Canon 70D or 60D with a nice lens, like a 51.4. I have a video that I made a couple months ago on this channel about buying gear and some good starter gear to buy. So I would definitely check that out. It's a great resource. Grace asks, work for an esports team and it's great, except I'm always shooting inside. What do you suggest for inside photography? Grace, you're gonna need to make sure that your lens is fast. So it might require buying a new lens, like a 50 f1.4 or a 35 f1.4, something with a really wide open aperture. Bigger your aperture is, the more light can come through the lens, which allows you to still shoot at a fast enough shutter speed while not cranking your ISO too high. So it could be gear related. If you have a kit lens on your camera that's f5.6 or something like that, you're gonna have a really hard time getting uh, good indoor photography without a lot of noise and a lot of bad stuff. Let's see, Ryan Cantrell, any recommendations on how to incorporate people into astro landscapes? It's really hard. I've personally never done it. Um, you're gonna need to light paint for sure, so you're probably you or another person is gonna have to paint with a flashlight the model that you're shooting. 
with light painting, a little tip, never light paint from behind the camera, because if you do that, it's just like direct blaster lighting. You always wanna run over to the side and hit them with light over there. Also shooting two pictures, one for the sky, one for the foreground, maybe even a third one for the light painting and merging them in Photoshop will get you much better results. Uh, Jared, is there an advantage of trying to match the playback on a Canon DSLR that would be downloaded raw image or my Canon full frame neutral picture style without any sharpening? Um, you know, not really. I don't think there's any advantage in matching it. Uh, picture styles are kind of overrated. I don't really use them that much. And obviously if we shoot raw, they don't apply. Um, I think the best thing to do is learn how to edit really well in Lightroom and do that. Uh, I think the better that people can edit, the better off everyone is gonna be. Um, so really putting emphasis on learning Lightroom and becoming very proficient is what, it'd be, what would be what I would recommend. Uh, let's see. Other questions. Besides the RMSP contest, are there any other high school student photography contests you know of or recommend? I don't know of any offhand. Um, I know there are others out there. Uh, I don't know about which ones they are. I would just do some Googling and see what there are. We'll do ours every year. So if you're not a senior, you have more opportunities to do that. Um, I think ours is probably the biggest and the most popular for high school students. I mean, this year we had over 10,000 kids enter, which is awesome. Tons of vendor partners. Um, I don't know of anyone as big as ours and someone might pipe in and say that they do, uh, but I would just do some Googling and see what you can find. Um, top two intermediate grade mirrorless cameras you recommend. Currently I have a 5D Mark III. Okay, top two intermediate grade mirrorless cameras. I would say like Sony a7 IV and I would say Canon EOS R. Those would probably be my top two, something like that. Uh, if you wanna save a little bit of money, Fuji X-T3 or X-T4, something like that. Uh, Brandon, hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? Um, is the Nikon Z50 good for wildlife? I actually don't know. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, I would do a little looking. Uh, it depends on how long the lens is. I don't know um, if it's Nikon Z series and it's using the new mirrorless mount that Nikon has. I don't know that they have a very long lens available for it yet, in which case, no. Um, the problem with a lot of these newer mirrorless camera series is, is that there's short on the amount of lenses available to people. So you kind of need your lens, your camera system to be in place for a while to get good lens choices, especially for wildlife. Say right now for wildlife, I think Sony is there and I think Olympus slash Panasonic is there in the mirrorless world. Um, let's see, outlets for purchasing gear. Shannon O'Connor asked, B&H 100%, I love B&H. If you're looking used, B&H has a great used department as well as KEH. They are also a great used camera company, uh, but B&H is where I do 99.9% .9 of my business. Um, thanks for a great Q&A. Improvement would be have Quinn there answering questions with you. JC, Quinn will do one of these eventually for sure. Um, Quinn is uh, at her house right now, so she's not here, uh, but she will eventually do a live stream on YouTube where we all take turns um, kind of doing these and we'll, we'll do them more often as we come moving forward. So thank you for the suggestion. Uh, Missoula-based company Submittable published a monthly newsletter with photo contests. Yes, that's actually too. Brian, that's a great point. Um, Submittable.com is a uh, company where you can, basically they help you have files submitted to you as a company. Um, they're like a sub company that does that and they do they do contests for sure. Um, really enjoy your tips, trying to learn about printing and sometimes get lost with so much information. What do you think I should focus on? So printing and photography, I don't know if Allison Shaw is still watching, um, but she is probably one of the best printers ever. Um, she's awesome, amazing photographer. You guys should check her out for sure. Um, printing is hard, there's a lot to it. And most photographers honestly choose to outsource their printing and use an external lab like Marcy with paper and ink. I talked about her a little bit earlier um, because of the complexities involved. If you do want to do it, it starts with having a printer and it starts with calibrating your monitor. And those two things are really important, having a nice printer and having a calibrated monitor and then using paper profiles for your specific paper and your specific printer. And those things are kind of a requirement for making good prints. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you're doing both of those in order to get a good result. Not a lot, but it'll get you started. Um, Astro modified camera's worth it. Ryan, funny that you said that. I have a Canon EOS RA literally 20 feet from me right now that I'm testing. Um, I know the answer though, it's yes, they're very worth it. 
if you're going to do a lot of Astro stuff, specifically close up Astro, not wide field Milky Way stuff. Wide field Milky Way, they'll help for sure. But if you're doing like nebulas and galaxies, astro modification is super important. Um, if light years to you is still watching, uh, he can attest to that. Um, he's one of my astro buddies and he got his camera modified and was blown away with the result right off the bat with what was what it was possible. So super sweet. Um, what printing sites are you recommending? Um, Photo G Wiz, I recommend paper and ink. It's super awesome. Marcy owns it. She's one of our instructors. She works here in Missoula and prints, prints nationally. She does all the printing for Amy Vitali. Um, tons of great prints. She's amazing, as well as uh, companies like um, White House Custom Color and uh, what's the other one? Artifact Uprising. There's a lot of great companies out there. Carla, hello. You are welcome for sharing your knowledge. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll probably end here pretty soon. If you guys have any uh, any last questions, leave them down below. Um, go join our MSP community, like I said. Follow us on Instagram because we're going to keep that inspiration coming, keep you guys kind of inspired in this time of having to stay home and self-quarantine. I hope you guys stay healthy. Um, I really thank you. This has been a good video. Uh, we're going to do more of these, like I said. We'll have a lot of them. Um, Allison Shaw is still there. Shooting Rod, you really need to use long exposure noise reduction. Um, Allison, I don't personally... Um, by the way, you're awesome. Thanks for still watching. Uh, I don't personally use long exposure noise reduction. I do a fancier technique called dark frame subtraction. Um, but if you are doing exposures over 30 seconds, I think it's really helpful if you don't want to worry about crazy stuff. Um, Brian, one more question. Let's see. What recommendations do you have for the best platform for photography websites? Oh, good. There's a few more. Um, best platform for photography websites are probably honestly at this point Squarespace. Um, there's not really a distinction between photography website providers and normal website providers at this point. We recommend all of our professional intensive students use Squarespace and they're really happy with it. Um, Zenfolio is another one. Um, they have a different little different scheme. Theirs are harder to make pretty, uh, but they have more features. So it's, it's just kind of a general website company at this point. I wouldn't recommend Wix. I think Wix is pretty hard to use from what I've seen. Um, it doesn't really have a lot of pretty options. Really, Squarespace right now is probably the best bet. Um, ba -ba -ba. Thanks for your feedback from Brazil. Verify the print quality. Let's see. Electronic equipment's here overpriced. Usually use your phone. I mean, it's fine to use your phone to verify print quality. Um, I, getting a monitor calibrator, though, I can really highly recommend. Super important. Um, thank you guys. That's awesome. Uh, let's see the last question here. I'll answer. What if you specialize in landscape photography? What gear do you remember, recommend for that? For landscape photography, big wide lens, something like a 16 to 35 or a 17 to 40, or if you're on a crop sensor, like a 10 to 15 or something in that range, 11 to 18. Um, those will be some great camera or lens options to use. Beyond that, with landscape, usually you're going to be making big prints. So you want a higher megapixel camera that can help you do that. All right, I hope you guys like this. I hope you learned something. If you guys like this video, I'd love you to hit that like button so that this video can get out there to other people, not just you guys who watched it, but thank you guys so much. You are the A team. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next video. We'll have other people on as well. So I will see you guys later. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll catch you in the next one.